In this video, I'll break down what the roadmap for learning AI ML in 2024 should be if you do not have any prior related experience. My name is Anwar and I've been working in the field of machine learning and data science for the last 10 years. And in these years, I've worked for companies like Meta, Cisco, and Wells Fargo. In this video, I'll try to condense my 10 plus years of experience to give you a roadmap for learning AI ML from a slightly different perspective than you find in other places. Instead of giving you the list of things you need to learn, for example, Python, SQL, etc., I'll start with the scenario of what are some example projects you would have to work on if you land a job as a machine learning or AI engineer, and then backtrack from there trying to understand what are the skill sets you would be needing to successfully execute that project. And then we'll explore what are the resources you could consult to most effectively learn those skills. And my hope is that with this approach, you will not only learn what you need to learn, but you will also learn why you need to learn those skills. And that why I think is much more important than the how. So let's start with the scenario. Let's say you land your first job in some subscription-based company, for example, Netflix, Spotify, etc. And once you started your job, the business team came to your AI ML team with the problem that how can you help them identify what are some customers who are more likely not to renew their subscriptions than others. And this information will be very useful for the business team because then they can focus more on those at-risk customers, increasing their likelihood of renewing their subscriptions. This is very popular model in the field of data science. It's called churn risk modeling. And I'll explain to you what the end-to-end -end life cycle of this modeling looks like. And I'll use this example then to further unpack that what are the skill set needed for you to succeed in building and delivering that model. And the best part is that the skill sets you need to successfully deliver on this model is very same as you would be needing to deliver on any other model. For example, pricing modeling, recommendation modeling, etc. So let's start with the process of what are the steps you would have to go through from the intake of this project all the way to when you deliver it and maintain it on an ongoing basis. The very first thing, of course, would be the communication with the business team, where you would be trying to understand what their business pain problems are, how you can solve them, what will be the information you'll be getting from their side, and then what would be the deliverables from your side, which will best help facilitate them. So that process of communication would be the first step towards this project. Once you have fully understood the problem, then comes the more technical part, which is that of data exploration. In this phase, you'll be looking at the data sources which are available. You will be combining different data sources, for example, customer demographic and their usage of the app, etc., to get the feature set which would be valuable for you. You will be also doing some initial preliminary analysis of the data in this stage. Once you have the data, you have made a good sense of what's in the data. Then the next step is that of actually machine learning modeling. Once you have built the machine learning model, for example, in this case, it will be the churn risk model. For each customer, you'll try to ascertain what is the probability of them renewing their subscriptions based on the different patterns you have seen in the data. Of course, you will thoroughly test your modeling technique to make sure that it is giving decent results and the predictions are very reliable. The next step after that, again, is communication with the business because now you have a deliverable which you can give to the business and you can get some real-time feedback from them in terms of how effective whatever you are delivering would be for the business. At this stage, there are two ways the project can go. One, that the business still needs some improvement in the model. So you might again go back to the stage of data exploration or ML modeling and again deliver the results to the business team. Or it's possible that the business team is happy with what you have. And in that case, your model actually starts getting used. And then you can proceed to the next stage in the life cycle of this machine learning modeling, which is ongoing maintenance and support. So this is what a typical life cycle of a machine learning project looks like. And as I said in the beginning, it doesn't matter if it is a churn risk model or pricing model or recommendation modeling, the entire process usually follows through these five stages. So now once we have broken down what those stages look like, let's zoom into each of the stage to see what are different skill sets you would be needing 
to successfully deliver on that stage. I won't go much into the detail of what you need to succeed in the field of communication because it is very self-explanatory and not very technical. So let's start with the phase of data exploration. Let's see what you need to succeed there. The very first thing you would be able to succeed in the phase of data exploration is that of knowledge of SQL. Whenever you are dealing with data, you have to merge different data sources, you have to apply certain filters, you have to aggregate data using different group by statements. So some knowledge of SQL is very essential if you want to do the data exploration. The other knowledge which you need to have at this stage is that of different platforms on which data is hosted. So some essential knowledge of some cloud services is very important, not only at the stage of data exploration, but also for the stage of machine learning modeling. The third thing you need to have some knowledge about is that of data warehouse. So some of your data could be in different platforms, different databases, and then how do you develop pipeline to pull these data sources from different sources and create a feature set which would actually be useful to you is sort of an art. It doesn't take a lot of time to learn that, but it is still very handy and essential component of building a feature set first so that you can develop some machine learning models on top of that. When you look at this, these skill sets which is needed at the phase of data exploration, usually data science and ML teams have a corresponding data engineering team which help and facilitate some of these components. So your knowledge on in these do not have to be 100%, even if it is like 60 to 70%, it is still usually considered sufficient because whenever you get stuck, you can leverage the help of those data engineering teams and they should be able to help you. And that is not the case in the next stage, which is machine learning model, because as an AI and ML team, you're supposed to be the expert in this area. And if your team gets stuck in that, you might not get help from any other team in this stage. So you better concentrate your focus in learning this phase of machine learning modeling because one, most of your interview rounds would be around this stage. And second, on the job, if you get stuck in this phase, you might not get help from other teams. So let's see what you need to know in the phase of machine learning modeling. One very obvious is that you need to have some knowledge around machine learning. Starting from statistics, how different machine learning algorithms work. You should have some knowledge about that. How you will learn it, I'll get to that in the next part of the video. Now the next skill set you need in this stage is that of Python programming. The reason I mentioned Python is that most of the machine learning libraries are supported by Python. About 80 to 90% of the teams which are using data science use Python. So this is one skill set you would be needing to effectively write the machine learning pipelines. And then of course, the code you would be writing would be hosted somewhere in some cloud services. So you would have to spin up some instances, you have to stop them when they're not running. You need to know what you need to install in those instances. So some knowledge of platforms and infrastructure is also needed. Again, this is usually not considered the core expertise of machine learning engineers, there are DevOps or ML Ops teams if you get stuck in that, but at least 6 to 70% high level knowledge is usually very helpful when you are actually building the machine learning models. Now, the next stage is again that of communication. As I said, I won't touch much on that, but briefly I would say that you don't have to worry too much about it in the beginning of your career, but in the later stages of your career, data storytelling is a very key skill which will distinguish a very seasoned data scientist and machine learning engineer from a newbie. But if you are in the beginning of your career, don't worry too much about it. So let's see what skill set do we need to maintain these projects on an ongoing basis. First, again, you need to know some knowledge of platform because most of these pipelines are hosted somewhere in some cloud services. They are scheduled in some way that they pull the data and run the model on at some cadence and then give the results somewhere. So platform knowledge is again a key in this entire process. The other thing you would need to know is some knowledge of statistics and hypothesis testing. And the reason is that most of the time there are different versions of the same model. And you would need to know that which model is giving statistically significant better results. So some knowledge about hypothesis testing, A-B testing is very critical in this stage. The other thing which you need to know at this stage is some knowledge about different dashboards. It could be Tableau, it could be Looker, or it could be any other dashboard. Usually these dashboards are not very hard to learn. And even if you do not have much knowledge about it, you can learn it on the fly, but having some knowledge around these dashboards where the results of some of your models would be coming in, for the business consumption is a very nice skill set to have. And though it is a very nice skill set to have, it is not 
necessary at all. Usually in the interview rounds, you don't get asked about this. And also during the job, if you do not have prior experience of working on the dashboard your team is using, it is usually not considered a big deal because you can watch a couple of YouTube tutorials and learn the dashboard tool you are using. So if you're just starting, I won't worry too much about this. So now when we have broken down what are the skill sets you would be needing at each of these stages, how you can effectively learn these skill sets in the most effective and efficient way. So let me again list down here the skill set which we have come across so far and then we'll explore what are the different resources you can use to learn those. So the first skill set which we came across is that of SQL. Next is that of python then you would be needing some ml knowledge after that you need the platforms knowledge for different cloud services and lastly the optional dashboarding knowledge so let's see what are the different resources you can use to effectively learn those so starting with sql sql is usually the easiest language to learn because there are just a handful of commands but you're only able to develop intuition around it if you practice it and for that there is a very good but not very known book which is called SQL Practice Questions. It has 57 questions, starting from very basic questions and then developing the complexity of the questions as you go along the book. So for learning SQL, I would highly recommend starting with that book. As for learning Python, there is a very good course on Udemy by Jose Portilla, in which he gave a very good overview of Python. And then he also gives some knowledge about how you can use Python and different libraries to develop some machine learning models. It is a very beginner friendly course and it gives you a walkthrough of different practice problems. So I highly encourage going through that course if you want to develop some understanding of how you can use Python to develop machine learning models. Now, when it comes to machine learning knowledge, this is the part which you need to spend most of the time in. And there are two components of machine learning. One is that you need to develop some basic intuition around statistics, hypothesis testing, machine learning algorithms and with how you can play around and develop them using Python. And the second piece whose scope is increasing every passing day is that of generative AI. So for the first part where you're trying to develop the fundamentals of machine learning knowledge, I would recommend this book of practical statistics for data scientists because I think it is a very beginner friendly book and it starts with very basics like what is average and mean and standard deviation and then it develops knowledge on top of that and it gives you an overview and develops intuition around how different machine learning algorithms work and also have some Python practice problems around it. So for developing the foundational knowledge for machine learning, I would highly encourage this book. Now as for the Gen AI piece, the best resource available online is that of deeplearning.ai. This is a platform which was started by Andrew NG and it is one of the best resource library for learning Gen AI and the courses are free and usually taught by best instructors in the field. So I would highly encourage at least going through some of the courses on deeplearning.ai to develop some intuition on how you can use Gen AI for most of the business problems. Now, as for the knowledge of platforms is concerned, one thing which I said before, as a data scientist, you need to know some knowledge of the platforms, but this is not considered your main forte. Most of the companies have some DevOps or ML teams which facilitate the platform and infrastructure for data scientists to work on. So even if you do not know much and you get stuck somewhere, usually there are people who could help you in there. But to develop the basic intuition around how different components of different cloud services work, I would encourage a very basic and foundational certification offered by AWS, which gives you a bird's eye view of how what are different cloud services available for AWS and how they interact with each other. Even if you are using different cloud platform like Microsoft Azure or GCP, most of the learnings you'll develop here do apply there as well. And lastly, to develop some understanding around how different dashboards work, for example, Tableau or Looker, these are the two most popular ones. You can just watch some YouTube videos to develop some basic intuition around it. And I think at an initial level, this should be sufficient. Now, as we have listed down, what are the resources you can consult to develop the skill set you need to successfully implement most of the business ML projects. Let me quickly walk through what I think is an optimum timeline as you go through learning all these skill sets. So for going through SQL, 
practice problem book i would say if you are studying three to four hours every day you should be able to complete majority part of that book in about two weeks and then as for going through the udemy course which, which gives you a walkthrough of python and how you can use it for different ml problems i would again allocate about the same time frame of, of two weeks to quickly go over that course and actually implement the hands-on practice exercises given there the next in the list is practical statistics for data scientists book again that book is not very math heavy written in a very beginner friendly way so if you allocate a time of about one month this should be enough for you to not only go through that course but also make some good notes out of it and also follow some python exercises given in that for going through some of the deep learning ai specialization course again don't go through all of them just pick three to four mini courses which are most foundational and give about one month of time to go through that courses and also build some portfolio projects which are given in those courses as for going through aws certification you don't necessarily have to give the certification exam you can just go through the content of it but if you actually sit in the exam it will give you a nice credentials you can put in your resume and also give you some confidence so i'll allocate one month to that as well as for youtube courses for dashboarding are concerned you can give a one day to it it shouldn't take much time so when you add up all these it sums up to about four months once you have gone through all that the next step i would encourage is actually building some portfolio projects on kaggle.com you can build two to three good projects on that it should take about one more month and the last month i would allocate towards resume building going through some frequently asked interview questions and giving some mock interviews. As for finding some frequently asked interview questions, you can go on websites like glassdoor.com where people have shared their interview experiences, including the questions they have been asked in the interviews. And you can find the interview questions asked for the roles of data scientists, machine learning engineers, AI engineers, etc. And as for giving some practice interviews, there is a very good website, which is pramp.com. It offers you free peer-to-peer -peer practice interviews. So I would highly encourage leveraging that. And that should be your goal for the last one month. So when you sum it up, all of them, then the grand total sums up to be about six months. And this is the time period, which I think for someone who is very dedicated, learning, about three to four hours every day consistently for six months. Going through all these courses and books and material which I have mentioned here, making some good notes out of those courses and books, and also trying to solve the practice problems and the projects which are mentioned in these resources. Then really spending the fifth month developing some good projects and the sixth month in building a good resume and then finding the most frequently asked interview questions as well as giving as many practice interviews as possible. If you do all of that, I'm pretty sure by the end of six months, you'll have some confidence that you can start applying for data science, AI, ML roles in a lot of companies. And even when your knowledge of the field would be better than 90% of the other applicants. And once you have gone through all of that, the next step is actually trying to find your first job. I've created a separate video on the topic of how you can find some jobs which have much lesser competition than the rest of the jobs. And by targeting those jobs, you can significantly increase your odds of landing the job. And it is especially needed if you are trying to get your first job in the field. The link for that video should be somewhere here. Please check it out. I'm pretty sure you like it. Thank you so much for watching.